Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Brussels. My name is Ilza Nagla and this time we will be talking about nationalism. And I'm joined here in the studio uh, by Marton Jundjusi, he's MEP from Hungary. Uh, and he's also vice president of the Jobbik party, which traditionally is considered right-wing party. And here in the European Parliament, you are not part of any of the big political groups, correct? That's correct. I'm yeah. not attached yet. And from Latvia, uh, I'm joined uh, by Nils Ushakos, MEP from Latvia. He's from the political group of Socialists and Democrats, uh, thus on the left spectrum of the political uh, parties. And he's also a chairman of the party council of Saskia. Absolutely correct. Uh, Mr. Junjushi, uh, Jobbik, your party, where your uh, vice president, uh, used to be a very radical and nationalistic party, and some even back in the days called you neo-Nazis. Now it seems that you are taking it more to the mainstream. Why is that? Is belligerent nationalism out of fashion? Uh, no, I think if you look across the landscape, uh, the political landscape of Europe, I wouldn't say it's uh, out of fashion. It's In some countries it seems to be... Uh, becoming almost mainstream, especially if I look at the populist, illiberal version of nationalism. Uh, but uh, one, the, the change within Jobbik has come from, from, there are basically two reasons for the, for the drastic change within the party. Uh, one of them has been that uh, we have had a government uh, since 2010 in Hungary, which has had very extreme right-wing policies in the past couple of years, especially since, well, 2010 We're about gradually. Viktor Orban's party. About Viktor Orban's yeah. party, yes. And I think uh, if, you, if, if, if you observe a, a party in government putting through policies which you have advocated previously, and you see it in practice, and you see how it isolates a country uh, completely, uh, especially on the European stage or on the international stage, then if you are wise enough, then you revise your, your, your previous opinions and your policies. This was one, one, probably the main reason why Jobbik has moved to the center. The other one is I think every organization has, a, has an organic uh, development and uh, just like people or individuals who whatever, if, if we think at the age of 40 the same about the world as we used to as a teenager, then I think there is a big problem. And mm -hmm. I think this is true for organizations as well. So, in a way, you just changed places with, uh, with Fidesz, with Viktor Orban's party. Him becoming, his party becoming more radical, you kind of became less radical. We, we are now centre-right center conservative, uh, would be the best terminology to describe your big today. What is your take? Why nationalism is becoming, still is popular, especially in Eastern Europe? Just uh, the, the, there's a slight change maybe how it is perceived, but it's still one of the, the, the most popular ideologies also in Latvia. I mean, your party came in elections first every time, it's never in the government. I think that um, Eastern European nations, primarily, they uh, want legitimately to protect their cultural, uh, linguistic identity, to protect heritage, which is a challenge in the modern world, in the global world. And uh, some of the nations, they uh, choose nationalism as a tool, I believe this um, uh, tool is uh, wrong if we talk about the way the world is developing. Because uh, if we talk about the interests of uh, small and medium sized nations, um, if they want to compete and they become successful uh, uh, in the new era, they have to be open. You have to speak many languages, you have to communicate with other nations, you have to trade with them, you have to cooperate. So uh, nationalism might be, uh, I would say, harmful as a tool. But again, uh, we see that um, not all the countries are doing extremely well. Uh, with respect to economical or social developments, and that's why this tool is uh, very traditionally chosen by many people. Do you agree? Nationalism can be harmful. Uh, it can be. I, I think uh, national. Well, let's get the terminology right. I yeah. mean, I think that being patriotic, being nationalistic, and being chauvinistic, I think, are uh, sometimes these terms are are interchangeable for most journalists and most people. They say, and, and when they say nationalism, then they think of something extremely, it's, it's, it's a very negative term in the West. Well, in, in Hungary, it, 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 is, it, is, it is much milder, I think, uh, in, in, in terms of, of, of language or usage. I would say patriotism is healthy. Uh, nationalism is, is, is already uh, something negative, which, which means that 
uh, that country or that government or that politician is incapable of compromises and incapable of, of uh, alliances or, or working together uh, with, with other nations, and chauvinism is already something, something extremely negative. So you even would agree, Emmanuel Macron, I think three years ago, said in his speech that, uh, let me quote, patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is betrayal of patriotism. I think so. I, I think that's quite a, a, especially from a Western, Western political point of view and knowing what a Western European means under nationalism and patriotism, I think that's a very correct terminology. Because in Western Europe, a nationalist is a chauvinist uh, who only thinks of him or herself and his national interests and nothing else and is incapable of compromises. And that's something very, very negative and damaging. But then we see also in all EU that every country thinks of its national interests. Uh, I mean, I just mentioned Emmanuel Macron, but when we, when we look at, at France, for instance, the French had said that they would like to uh, increase importance of the French language in the EU, also here in the EU institutions, and kind of replace English as the main language used. Isn't that nationalism as well? French no, nationalism? It's, it's an old story between uh, France and the UK. It's just something really special. Uh, I wouldn't try to put it in the overall context. Now, uh, the, these two languages are competing with each other, and it's absolutely natural that now, with the UK being out of the European Union, like, of course, French should be dominating. Um, the one difference uh, when we talk about the Macron uh, quote and, 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 and difference in nationalism and patriotism and the way it's treated as the Western East is that Eastern uh, European societies are much more homogeneous. So we, in many countries, a nation, ethnical group is exactly the same. So nationalism and patriotism can be interchangeable because it's one nation and one ethnical group. In France, society is much more sophisticated. So if you talk about national interests, who's white uh, uh, Catholic French, or you talk about everyone. So that's why it, it is so important to distinct, and it's why it, we, didn't, we talk about Macron quote, it was good, it was correct. But yes, I mean, I, I, in France, on one hand, uh, they're fighting for national interests, I mean, like contract for submarines. It is definitely has nothing to do with nationalism because it's not about French language or French culture or, 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 or any type of heritage. It's about financial and economic inter interest of the whole nation. So it's patriotism, uh, which is good. Uh, and if we would like to be more precise, in Eastern Europe, using patriotism as a part of the wording of parties, as a part of our, our daily agenda when we talk about politicians debating things, that would be extremely healthy. Um, you both represent, uh, your parties are pro-European. I'm just wondering, what is the difference um, how ready, for instance, your political sort of wings, uh, left and, and, and right, are when we are looking about the, on the European future, uh, on the federal Europe? How much do you think, uh, because some say that nationalism can tear the whole EU project apart, if everybody, every country says, well, Latvia first, Hungary first, or like we, we heard America first. How far can, can, can right-wing parties and national parties go, or patriotic parties, uh, if you want, uh, can go in the finding this federal common Europe? Well, you see, when the, when the whole European Union was constructed as, a, as, a, as, a, as an institution, I think the, the balance within it uh, is, is, is very, very fine-tuned. I mean, if you can see here, resolutions uh, and ideas going back and forth between the Commission, the European Parliament and the, and the, and the, and the European Council, there is a very, very intricate uh, balancing act when any type of issue is being discussed. And I think, uh, well, federalism, I think, is a very, very distant ideal and we are very, very far away from it as, as, as far as uh, the European Union is concerned. But I think uh, when it comes to, I, I, I'm a great fan of issue-based politics, and I think that's what drives the world forward. If we start to talk about ideology, then I'm sure that we would uh, rarely get on the, find the common ground. But if I talk about, about climate, when I talk about uh, tackling the pandemic, when I'm talking about uh, uh, increasing the, the welfare of uh, the Eastern European bloc uh, compared to the Western to, to close the wage gap, then all of a sudden I touched on a number of issues which are uh, 
are very, very important from the national uh, interest point of view, and at the same time, uh, very, I, I, I think, socially and, and economically uh, sensible for, for anyone from the socialist group or from the green group to, 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 uh, to, uh, to understand and to support. So I, I, I believe in issue-based politics and I'm, 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 my thinking is much less ideological. Uh, I think ideology is the 20th century. Uh, issue-based politics is the 21st century and this is what this institution should also move towards. Do you agree? Uh, well, I would talk about practical approach, which is basically the same uh, as issue-based politics, uh, small and medium-sized nations are extremely interested in having strong European Union. Because strong European Union is the only tool, uh, I believe, that can protect our nations in all sense of view, I mean, economically, socially, and with, uh, when we talk about um, uh, linguistic, cultural, and other uh, things which are important for every nation. So, um, EU is a tool to protect it. And that means if we want to have a strong European Union, a higher level of federalism will be inevitable because otherwise, if we talk about practical things, it will be uh, um, functioning for the wrong in a not most effective way, which is not good. And then we will be outperformed by others. And then uh, the whole uh, future of the Union will be uh, on threat. So more federalism is good for small nations, even uh, including their desire for what we call here as nationalism, what is called uh, by Macron as a patriotism, what we understand by protecting certain interests of small and medium-sized nations. But if, if countries where nationalism is, is, is important, that patriotism, it's like we talked in small countries, is, is, is very important, they will not be willing to give it up uh, for the sake of federalism, for the sake so of... That's the whole um, thing, that the trade-off is not between losing your Latvian identity if you give up more... Um, sovereignty to the European Union. It's the other way around because it's only in the European Union you can see Latvian language being spoken all over the continent. I mean, in the parliament it is translated everything, all the documents, all the speeches, everything is getting dubbed in Latvian. It's, uh, I mean, where else could we get such a protection? So we need, with this respect, more federalism because that would help Latvian nation to protect certain things that are important for us. And uh, sorry, if I if I may just uh, uh, intermit with with one idea, just listening to to Niels on this subject. I I think that the world has changed immensely, and what we see in today's world is that, regardless of what we think of nationalism or national interest, uh, more and more issues have become unsolvable on the national level. Mm -hmm. I mean, here is the issue of migration. Here is the issue of climate change. Here is the issue of, of a global economic uh, uh, crisis looming just following the pandemic. All these issues uh, basically connect us all together. You, can, you cannot find a national strategy for any of these issues because it doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I, as a nationalist, I can try to protect the environment in Hungary, but it makes no sense because the environment is, is, is global and we either do something about it together or our individual strategies are doomed to fail. And that's the same for our economic problems, that's the same for, for health issues or like issues concerning the pandemic. So there are more and more issues coming which, uh, which make us realize that there are no such thing as, no such thing as purely uh, national strategy for, for tackling that problem. And I think this teaches us politicians, uh, right or left, to collaborate with other countries, uh, as, say at a regional level, if I'm too small, because I think both our countries are too small to make a difference in a big alliance of 27 countries, um, we can find issues which are regionally important and relevant and make alliances on issues and represent them together in alliance in the European Union and make it move forward. But if we want a small nation to go for the wrong, yes, to complete program minimum to survive, let's put it this way, facing economical, geopolitical, environmental and so on challenges, and for the wrong to protect the, what we understand by uh, cultural and linguistic uh, important things. We cannot do it alone. I mean, since the only way to go further is to be together with other nations. So you solve together issues that are unsolvable at an individual level by member states like environmental, for instance, and just provide your tool to protect your 
national law, ethnic, linguistic, etc. interest. So being nationalistic or be, uh, and being European, that there is no no contraindication. You can you can you can do both. Okay, I, I, we use the terminology to be more precise. Being patriotic, what we understand usually in our country in Latvia as nationalistic, is absolutely compatible with being pro-European. Agree? Fully agreed. Okay, on this it's note, when the Social Democrats agree with the right-wing party, with a conservative party, that's uh, quite unique, on ideological issue, on nationalism, on this, uh, on this we're actually going to end this debate. Thank you and bye.